Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you on Tuesdays, um, but now, as opposed to being live, we're going to be doing some pre-recorded episodes. So thank you for tuning in and joining us. Um, we are in the midst of a series talking about VA loans. So a loan that is available specifically to qualified veterans. And I have joining me here today is expert Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. And each week we're going to be talking a little bit more about the veteran loans. There are some myths out there, some misnomers, some misinformation um, out there. So we want to make sure that we're providing you with some clear facts about the VA loans um, so that you have some information and can make informed decisions if you are a qualified veteran. So welcome back, Jenny. Thanks so much again for having me, Tracy. Um, yes, thank you. you know, like you mentioned, with VA loans, and especially in the last few years, yeah, right, um, when there was a lot of competition and multiple offer situations, um, you know, many times it was cash and conventional loans that tend to dominate. Right. Um, and, and just generally speaking, anytime there's something that's not maybe common or popular or utilized the most, right? There's sometimes misunderstanding. Sure. When yep. it comes to, um, that's especially true when it comes to loan types. And there are definitely more than six, um, you know, myths out there regarding sure. VA <laughs> loans that have been perpetuated over time. So we are yeah. just going to touch on the top um, six. Right. Myths right, right. That are out there. And, and today we're going to, we're going to cover two of those. So yeah. we, we kind of have it broken down. So, Today we're going to cover two of those. Next week, one, because there's a little more to, to cover on that. Mm -hmm. And then the following week, three, because they all kind of intertwine. So, um, And again, these are just the top myths. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're providing some information. But yes, like you said, there was you know a lot. It's been, it's, it's been a very interesting and different market the last couple of years. But thankfully, we are back into a normal market, more of a normalized market. Um, so we... Um, we're starting to see, you know, just, just some of those normal patterns um, in the market, a little more, um, you know, give and take between buyers and sellers. And um, it's just really, it's, it's really great, really great to see. So absolutely, absolutely. And so today we're going to touch on, um, you know, to zero down equal a weak buyer, right? Right. right? And then uh, many times veterans themselves don't know that um, you can you have more than one VA loan at a time? So, okay. um, you know, first and foremost, again, you know, remembering that this is a benefit, you know, to a veteran, um, and even family or, you know, the spouse mm -hmm. of a veteran mm -hmm. in some instances as well. So these, you know, this benefit to be able to put a home or buy a home with zero down was something that was earned through service and sacrifice. Right. Okay. And so, you know, aside from the zero down, there's no private mortgage insurance charged to a veteran. There's no limits on the, the loan amount that you can borrow. Right. You just have to qualify. There's a little okay. caveat there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, typically, the VA loans have a little bit lower interest rate than even conventional loans. Okay. Um, and there's, there's, there's a lot of benefits. I mean, really, if you are a veteran and you qualify... Um, you know, this is definitely a loan that you want to take a look at, right? Like you and I, Jenny, are both huge on informed decisions and exploring this loan option is definitely something you should. Now, how does a veteran know if they are qualified for a VA loan? Um, well, in order to know if they qualify, uh, we, we call it the lender's golden ticket. Okay. <laughs> it's called a COE or their certificate of eligibility. Okay. Their certificate right. of eligibility is what helps us determine is the veteran eligible. Okay. And then are they qualified? Okay. All right. So those are two things that are intertwined, right? Yep. Um, they have to meet the requirements to be actually eligible to have earned that benefit yep. through um, either you know time time served, um, discharge type, etc. Okay. So um. And that comes from the VA, correct? You get they the, they can get the certificate of, el of eligibility from the VA that they can then provide to you or their lender or some lenders that have um, you know the the right certifications. You can also obtain that for them. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We're able and for Ross Mortgage, we are able to go ahead and um, request the certificate of eligibility on behalf okay. of the veteran. But that's really, I mean, first and foremost to determine 
you know, what a veteran can do. Yep. Got to have that golden ticket. All right. Access so, to the golden s- ticket. So but. need the golden ticket. And um, so a couple of things that we said we we're going to talk about today is does a zero down buyer mean that they are a quote unquote weak buyer? And the answer is a big old no. no. <laughs> Ab- absolutely yeah. not. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, we touched on different loan types, mm-hmm. um, like with um, an FHA loan, for example, the minimum down payment requirement is three and a half percent. Right. All right. And so they're both government backed or government insured loans. Yep. So we're going to compare those. It doesn't mean the v, you know, FHA loan is a bad loan. No, they're just they're different. They're, they're just different. different loans. But there yeah. is a down payment requirement. Right. In FHA. You know, um, these are some statistics actually from um, going back to 2021. OK. Okay, an FHA borrower, um, their median FICO was a six seventy two, median household income was sixty eight thousand seven hundred three dollars. Okay, and the average <laughs> loan <laughs> amount was two hundred two two hundred thirty two thousand seven hundred seventy three dollars. Okay, so that was the average or medians um, in twenty twenty one for an FHA buyer. Okay, same year, a VA buyer, the median FICO seven thirty six. Okay. Median household income ninety thousand one hundred and fifty six dollars, so there was quite a bump there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the average loan amount was a little bit higher as well, three hundred four thousand eight hundred forty four dollars. Okay, so the statistics are showing us that it's not, you know, if you're using a VA loan just because you're using that benefit that that you are you've earned, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't mean that you're a weaker buyer. It just means that you you want to use one of the benefits that that you've earned, and um. You know, you know, as we mentioned in the in the previous episode, um, just because now here's something that's important too, right? For a VA loan, just because you can put zero down doesn't mean they they will. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. I I've had veteran clients that use the VA loan but decided, eh, you know what? I'd rather have my payment be this amount because you can put zero down. It just means just like with any loan, right? The more down payment you put down, mm-hmm. um, the the lower your monthly payment. So. There's there's lots of different options, but the key is that it's an option and it's the veteran's choice. And um, right, and it and just for anybody who goes to sell a home, if you have a veteran in offer that comes to you with a VA loan, it does not mean that that they are not as strong or stronger than the next offer that comes through. And I know one of the things that you do, Jenny, um, you know, which is nice, is that when you're working with a veteran buyer who's using the veteran loan, you do contact and communicate that with the listing agents so that there's you know there's no confusion that that clarification is there Mm -hmm. um so that can be communicated then to the seller so that um you know because informed decisions right always the best absolutely yeah absolutely and again Mm -hmm. um like you said right it's an option it's a choice for an fha loan or conventional loan for example they don't you don't have a choice you have to put a down payment down. right and right. that's probably the biggest distinguisher and okay. you know sometimes people also choose to keep that money for um the home they're buying if they want to do yep. updates yeah and, and maybe they're gonna buy a new car after they after they close after, after they you close, close yes <laughs> always always be. after yeah right but um <laughs> again the, yeah you just can't judge a book by its cover. Right. Necessarily. So, so absolutely. So is a, is a zero down buyer, a weak buyer? No, the answer is absolutely not. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Um, mm-hmm. Can you only have one VA loan at a time or can you only use your VA loan once and that's it? Um, that is a big one. Okay. Yeah. Many yeah. times <laughs> I, I hear from veterans, like, you know, I always ask everybody, Male, female, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. You know, are you a veteran? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that I hear back from someone who is a veteran is like, well, I'm saving it. <laughs> like maybe they want to save it for, they think they'll move up home. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. a big home. They're for forever home. Right. And um, no, you can use your um, VA, VA entitlement, you know, yeah, more your, than one. Your benefit. Yes. You can use the benefit. It's not a one and one. done. It's not a one and done. It is something that you can use multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, going back to that certificate of eligibility, which Mm -hmm. will tell you what it's termed entitlement, but it's really how much benefit do you have? And that's different for different veterans. And it's Mm -hmm. also different based on um, if you have already have a current veteran, you know, VA loan, Mm -hmm. um, and you're going for your second one, um, because there are there are still some limits 
but it's not a oh, once I've used it, it's used up and, and I can't use it again. And correct. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And and so with the, the amount of eligibility you have left is how high of a purchase price can you go and put zero down? OK. Yep. Yep. That's the caveat. It's like, yeah. Can you buy more than one? Yes. It's a combination of what do you qualify for then, right? Sure. Um, so as a quick example, you know, a veteran isn't capped by, you know, hey, if you qualify for a $400,000 loan amount, but you want to buy a $500,000 house, doesn't mean you can't buy, if you qualify, you can't buy the $500,000 house. Right. You would need to put 25% of the difference between that four and $500,000 or $25,000. Okay down on the home and that's that equates yeah. to five percent okay so so you can you can buy more than what the what the va is guaranteeing so that's all that's saying is the va is going to only guarantee a specific up to a specific amount exactly it doesn't mean that as a veteran you can't purchase above that amount it just means that hey this is how much the veteran or the the va is going to guarantee so exactly um, which is which is good information to know so um so your entitlement what what's called entitlement on your certificate of eligibility is just how much of the loan is going to be guaranteed by the va exactly and, okay and that's something that you know we 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 you know that's something that's different just like with any um any person who's you know going to you know qualify for a loan any type of loan it's different for everyone, right? Like you mm -hmm. can't say uh, this is what the interest rate is going to be because it's different for every single person based mm -hmm. on so many different factors, which is also the same for veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's certificate of eligibility is going to look a little bit different. So for your specific um, situation, you do want to have a qualified loan officer go through that with you and tell you exactly what that means for you in your situation. Absolutely. And you so. kind of made me think of a few other good points as well. Yeah. Um, you know, many times it's, it's a little bit difficult, more difficult here in, um, you know, Metro Detroit. But um, this is, we're talking, it could be a, a single family residence up to four unit property. Okay. And so many times if, if someone, you know, duplex, for example, a veteran buys a, a duplex or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe they're um, transferred for their job somewhere else. They keep the duplex, you know, for the rental right and they purchase another um single family residence but it does need to be a primary residence okay when you're purchasing the property okay right? a va is not to purchase you know investment property right right vrbos <laughs> or anything like that um as with any loan type it's all about your intent you must okay. occupy the residence sure and it's typically a minimum of 12 months um and then in addition to being able to utilize your benefit more than once the benefit is for the veteran Mm -hmm. So if a veteran and a co-borrower want to apply to purchase a home, okay, the zero down option is off the table. Okay, there's a twelve and a half percent minimum down payment requirement okay. in those instances. Okay, interesting. So even if it's a spouse, so if a veteran and a spouse want to purchase a home, nope, the spouse okay. is the the spouse is, is the, the exception. Yep, okay, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to be lying if I said there wasn't people who ran to the courthouse wow. and, and tied the knot <laughs> in order to be able to purchase the home. They're well, planning on getting married anyway. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But okay. um, that is definitely important to note. Okay. So it, it's a spouse, but if there was, you know, sometimes parents and, and kids decide to, you know, purchase homes together and um, that would be a situation where, um, no, the, the zero down is, is not, you're not eligible then at that point for right. the zero down. So it has to be. Just the veteran or a veteran and spouse in order to um, mm -hmm. to take take advantage of that benefit. So okay, yeah. So you can still Fair create enough. wealth, you know. Yep. By utilizing your VA benefit. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's great. All right. Well, thank you so much, and stay tuned. So this was episode two. Um, if you missed the overview that we gave last week, you can go ahead and check out that episode. And then next week we're going to be coming up and talking more about. Does the seller have to pay the veteran's closing costs? So we'll have that answer for you next week, Tuesday on Team with Tracy. Thank you all for tuning in. Jenny, thanks for joining us. Thanks, we'll see you Tracy. next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.